beautiful for heroes to in liberating strife more than self yeah country love and mercy more than life America God, he done shed his grace on thee. He crowned thy hood, you know. He gave us brotherhood from sea to shining sea. You know, when I was in school, we used to do it like this here. Oh, beautiful. For spacious skies, for amber waves a grain. Yeah. Purple mountain, majesty. It's also a special year. It's 70 years since the end of World War II, and it's the 240th birthday of the United States Navy. Thank you for your service. What does Veterans Day mean to you? It means honoring our country for the veterans who lived and died and who helped, who helped who help honor our country. And, and, I'm, and I'm very proud of the veterans today who who helped to serve our country and win on World War One? Did any of your family members serve? My dad served my country in in the 1960s. Congratulations to your dad. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is my grandfather, and I'm so proud of him. With us is Emily Ertz, and she is Miss New York. Could you first tell us uh, what are the qualifications to become Miss New York? Well, the qualifications to become Miss New York is simple. All you need to do is be enriched in academics, and you need to help out in your community. Well, congratulations on that. Now tell me, what does Veterans Day mean to you? Veterans Day means a big importance in my life. This is because my grandfather and my uncle and more of my family members actually served in these wars. And, and what wars did they serve in? Well, my grandfather served in World War II and he was in the Navy. And? My uncle, he actually served in this war, the Vietnam War, and he was in the Army. 
And now this picture, right, this photograph right here, I'm going to hold this up. He was in the Marines, and I'm so proud of him. World War II. World War II. We're proud of you. And today they're having a, a sort of a campaign that everybody's carrying photographs. Yeah, they are, and I'm happy to hold his photograph because I'm so proud of him, and I miss him so much, and I wish he could be here with me today. Wow. I wish so, too. So let's just say a shout-out to all the veterans. Thank you for all your service. Thank you, veterans. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Warren Hick. This is a... Uh, a national program where young people across America are being encouraged to find the photos of World War II veterans in their family and make them into posters like this and carry them every Veterans Day. This is the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II. So today here in New York and in about 10 other parades in Dallas, in El Paso, in Indianapolis, San Diego, Seattle, kids are doing this exactly what they're doing here in New York. But this is the biggest and the first parade. And of course it's a Navy parade. So we're honoring those people who were Navy veterans in World War II. Veterans Days are very important to me. It's one day that I can march with my fellow comrades, people that served with me throughout the years. Veterans Day, I think, is very, very important in America that the populace of America should realize what the veterans have done throughout the, throughout the, throughout the 200 and something days of our existence. A veteran today is one person that has served, served their country. As we all know, freedom isn't free. Unfortunately, freedom is very costly, and the cost of freedom is buried in the cemeteries across the world. Today's a special, special day, and I feel so honored and elated to march with my fellow veterans. Thank you. I served in Vietnam 1969, 1968 and 1969. Served the United States Air Force with the 12th Tactical Fighter Wing. I was a flight engineer and a flight mechanic. I flew on caribous and various other aircraft throughout South Vietnam. Are you active now? I am active now with Chapter 126, the Vietnam Veterans of America. I also ride in Rolling Thunder. I'm a motorcycle enthusiast. I love riding on Memorial Day with them. I'm also a member of the American Legion, also the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and with the American Legion Riders. It's Veterans Day here in New York City. With us, your name? Jim Sorensen. Jim, and, and tell me what brought you down here today? Well, I was, I was in a Boy Scout and uh, an explorer, and it probably saved me from going to jail when I was a young boy. And uh, then I joined the Navy, and I was in the Navy construction battalions for three years, and I stayed in the reserves. And then after I came out, I was a cop and fireman, and I survived the 9-11. I was knocked out, and uh, after that, I... Uh, I kept doing service. I went to Africa and built a nursery school in northern Kenya and uh, went six times to Katrina and uh, continued going out with the fire department DART team on hurricanes and tornadoes. And we served with the Boy Scouts here and it's a continuation of service for what I was given as both in 9-11 and as a boy in a Boy Scouts. And, and tell us, this year, uh, the Navy, tell us about the Navy this year. It's sort of a special year for them. Well, the Navy is a special service. I mean, you have to understand, the Navy, the Navy goes back to prehistoric times with the Continental Navy. We, we started out with private ships and uh, privateers originally, and then we, then we get into it, and uh, it's been continuous that, you know, we just continues to serve the country you know peace through through understanding is a whole realm and and we're, we're all over the world we have cbs in europe we have cbs in croatia we have cbs in africa we have navy people with hospital ships doing you know just service without what we have to do in wartime just the idea of giving back to the world that's what we're here for it's peace through understanding, but also through having the force to be able to do it. And the Navy serves that, both with our Marine Corps, our CBs, our aviation, and of course the ships to keep, to keep the international trade free. And is it 240 years? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, to the Navy. <laughs> Thank you for and your I service. I see I'm getting my picture taken by the Alligator Navy. There's nothing like the Alligator Navy. <laughs> An LP. 
LPD, Landing oh. Ship Dock. <laughs> well, thanks again for your service. With us is Hector Guzman, and I see you're from Vietnam era. Uh, what years did you serve, Hector? 1966 to 68, Vietnam 1967, 1968. And, and where uh, were you located? Long Bend, 14 miles northeast of Saigon. And, and tell me uh, what branch of the service you were in. U.S. Army, First Signal Command. And, and how old were you? I was 25 when I was in Vietnam in 67. And you said you were a Tet survivor. Could you, could you explain That's what that? That's when the enemy invaded, not invaded, but uh, <laughs> how would you say? All hell broke loose on, on, on the night of January 30th. That's when the enemy invaded all U.S. military installations throughout South Vietnam on that night. And I'm a Tet Offensive survivor as well as a prostate cancer survivor. Good morning. My name is Gabe Stefania. I'm the chairman of the Vietnam Veterans, or actually New York City Vietnam Veterans uh, Restoration Committee. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about a lunch that we had yesterday at the Metropolitan Club, fabulous venue in New York City. Our guest of honor was General David Petraeus, who spoke uh, very emotionally, fabulous speech. Another featured speaker was uh, Paul Buca, Medal of Honor winner, and also a uh, teacher of General Petraeus at West Point when General Petraeus was just a cadet. Our memorial at uh, 55 Water Street was originally built in 1985 through the efforts of then Mayor Koch. Mayor Koch decided in 1985 that it was time to have a fitting tribute to the Vietnam veterans of America who never received a tribute when we came back in the end of the war, which was declared as 1975. He built a memorial and uh, also gave us a ticket tape parade down Broadway, which we were told at that time was the largest ticket tape parade ever in New York City. Um, some of the uh, restoration that we're doing actually in 1999, that's when my group, I'm also on the board of directors of Friends of Vietnam Veterans Plaza, our group was formed in 1999 to uh, restore some of the weather damage to the memorial and also to uh, add elements to the plaza. We, besides renovating the memorial, we added uh, a fountain, we added uh, a plaque, and we added the walk of way. We also added a map showing the major battles of the war. We added a uh, we added the Walk of Honor. The Walk of Honor is a number of plaques listing the 1,741 names of those residents of New York City who were killed in the Vietnam War. What a lot of people don't know is uh, on that wall is the name of a 15-year-old soldier, Keith Bullock, who was the youngest soldier ever to die in Vietnam. He was a New York City resident. The memorial now is going under another restoration, which I am in charge of. We're relighting the entire memorial with state-of-the-art LED lighting. And uh, we're also relighting the Walk of Honor, mainly because Hurricane Sandy put our whole plaza under four feet of water. So besides running all the new electric uh, and a lot of the renovations, we, we went uh, with Parks, who actually owned, that's the Department of Parks, who actually owns a lot of the plaza. We went with them to FEMA and got a lot of help uh, and a lot of money to help restore. And that's going underway now. If you actually go down there now, you'll see the whole thing is all boxed in, it's under construction. Um, I am hoping to have the memorial completed in the spring for our uh, March memorial that we do every year at 55 Water Street, and then have the major renovation completed sometime the following year. Uh, today is Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day to everyone. We're here at the Veterans Day Parade with Crystal Hart. Uh, behind me is my uh, uh, float. Uh, that's the Vietnam Veterans uh, Chapter 126 float. And on that float, we have a tribute to one of our board members who passed away, who's actually the father of this parade. Um, there was just a small parade, and he took it over about 15 years ago, and it's now America's Parade. It's broadcast live on TV, on major network, for, for uh, I guess it's 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock, so three full hours. It's also rebroadcast on Sunday, uh, highlights of the parade. Uh, he will be sorely missed. Thank you for your time, thanking me for allowing me to speak. Uh, happy Veterans Day, everyone. God bless. 
We're here with Robert Steffen and it's Veterans Day. Could you tell us what Veterans Day means to you? Veterans Day means it's the greatest country to live in in the United States and to also honor the call when they give it to you to serve. So my dad did it and I did it. When, what years were you in the service and, and what branch were you in and what war were you in? I was in the Vietnam War. I was in the service from 1968 to 1970 and I was in the U.S. Army. And you, you mentioned your father. Tell me a little bit about him. Yep, I'm wearing one of his medals today. He was in the Army Air Force, what they called it. Air Corps got his dog tag on and mine. He was in Germany, World War II. And what role did he play in World War II? You know, that's a good question. He was also in the infantry unit, but I'm not sure exactly where because as when we came home, lots of times we didn't want to talk about exactly where we were and what we did. It takes us a while to age out and start recognizing that fact. Well, I'd like to say thank you for your service. You're very, very welcome. And thank you to everyone else, all the support people, the spouses, the the veteran service officers that help serve us and get us through the maze of things as we age out. It's just wonderful to have support people and be recognized. If tomorrow all the things are gone, I work for all my life, and I had to stop again with just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away is uh, from the President of the United States. It's called the Presidential Citation Medal. And the red one, is the, the whole unit gets the red one. It's a uh, uh, Meritorious Service Medal. And uh, those, those are pretty high medals, uh, ribbons. So I'm, I'm very proud to receive the President's one then. How do you receive the Presidential Medal? It's, uh, it's, it's a whole division. It, uh, it's, it's up to uh, the Department of Defense uh, and the President of the United States. It, uh, given to the unit or given to a certain person in the unit. Not everybody gets the Presidential Citation Medal, but it's, uh, most of the time the unit gets it. It's a unit effort, division effort, so. And what act was that for? Well, I got this after the Gulf War. The, my, 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 my unit, my uh, company received it after the Gulf War. Yeah. We're with Benny Marrero. And Benny, tell us, what division of the service were you in? I was in the Army, U.S. Army, 82nd Airborne. And what war? Gulf War. The Gulf War? Yes. And, and, and tell us a little bit about your experiences. <laughs> it was a fighting in war. It was uh, all night fighting. And uh, lost a couple of friends there. So it wasn't a pretty good experience. So it's, uh... And tell me about some of these medals here. You're, you're very decorated. <laughs> well... Uh, Bronze Star, Army Commendation, Army Service Ribbon, uh, Recruitment Ribbon, National Defense. I got a, a bunch of them. Well, tell us about CIB. those ribbons. What, do, what, do, what, does, what does a CIB ribbon mean? CIB is a combat infantry badge. It means I was in combat. I'm an infantry soldier. I was in combat, a foot soldier. And I was awarded the CIB in the Gulf, from the Gulf War. And I was also awarded the Bronze Star with a V valet in the Gulf War. And what's the Bronze Star mean? The Bronx Star is for something, well, I don't call myself a hero, but they, they said it was for heroism that I went, went beyond the cause of duty, so they uh, presented me with the Bronx Star. Oh, what was the situation that you were in? Uh, saving two people's lives, you know, under, under fire. They were under fire, and I, I managed to pull the, my vehicle to the front, let the vehicle take the bullets while they got inside. 
and I didn't think I was going to get anything. I, did, I wasn't expecting it. It just happened out of the blue. It came down one day and uh, presented to me in the desert. Yeah. Very well decorated. Tell me where, about a couple more of these. Well, expert rifle, grenade, and pistol. Paratrooper, because I'm a jumper from the 82nd. Uh, crew chief wings, CIB. Uh, those are most of my awards, but I'm proud of them. I'm proud to be standing here with you. Uh, thank and you. thank you so much for your service. And thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. They keep us free. They keep this nation free. Thank we, you. We try our best. <laughs> <laughs> we try our best. You did your best. Thank you. Thank you. We are with the Spirit of 45 organization that tries to remember what the feeling of this country was like on the uh, anniversary of the end of World War II. And the sailor kissed the nurse. The yes. sailor kissed the nurse. And that's what we try to recreate every time. Thank you. Hi, Michael Froren. And, and what division of the service did you, uh, were you in? I was in the United States Army. I was in E-4. And what year? 1966 to 1968. And what does Veterans Day mean to you? Well, it means a lot. It means a lot of people come together who are veterans from all wars, supporting each other, which I think the United States really needs that kind of support right now. With all men from all the wars in the past and for all the youth today, what we're, we're confronting today is a lot of terrorism and we need to hold together as one big unit. Well, um, I also think uh, Vietnam veterans are a, a great bunch of guys and they uh, deserve the recognition at last that they didn't receive when they came back from Vietnam in 1968 and 69. It was a, coming home was a uh, coming home into New York City was a different feeling because it, there was a lot of anti-war protests and you know I wasn't for the war necessarily towards the end because I felt it had a lost cause and a lot of people were basically getting killed for no reason towards the end of the Vietnam War because they're trying to pull everybody out basically but they had to kind of save face. When Nixon went into Cambodia to, you know, bomb the Ho Chi Minh Trail and everything else over there, but the, uh, <clears throat> I felt when we came back in, in the late 60s, there was a lot of animosity towards us because the war was so unpopular, but I think over the last 15 to 20 years, that attitude has changed, thank God, for the good of Vietnam veterans and for the good of the country. Okay, my name is Mary Cooney, and I'm the daughter of John J. Cooney, who died a year ago, natural death causes, no problem. But he was a World War II veteran, and this is his parachute that he had made into his future bride, my mother's wedding gown. And he took it to the Italian artisans on his 35th combat mission. Six bronze stars, three air medals. It's in perfect condition. A bullet hole, a bullet hole right here. And then this here, number 16, that was his parachute number. So as you can see, everything is in perfect condition. And it's just a family treasure. I loved him so much. It was just so brilliant. What an amazing inspiration for everyone. <laughs> another another star. Vietnam, Vietnam. My brother was in Vietnam too. Army Air Force. Look at that. <laughs> Crystal, Crystal, thank you so very much for covering this wonderful event. As once more, I'm Chief Master Sergeant Ed Schloman, and I represent the David Lynch Foundation, working with those with post traumatic stress. But it was my honor the other night to be on the USS New York. And what was that honor? These poor guys take care of my Marines. And, and it's a tough battle where they go. And they put out the fires throughout the world. And nobody knows that they're there. And nobody knows that they come back. But what they do know is that the steel from the World Trade Center takes care. I think it's the bow. Yep, it's the bow. It's the bow. 
And I'd like you to speak to some of these heroes that don't want to be called heroes, just like we did on the event that came across uh, the Fifth Avenue. And I just love seeing everybody out there with their families, with their children, because that's the future of America. So let me give you the chief here that runs the enlisted squad of the Navy ship, the USS New York. Hello, uh, my name is Jesse Meyer, and uh, I'm on the USS New York. I, I, um, I'm the top snipe. I am responsible for the engineering department. I have like, on any given time, about 135 sailors, and, and uh, it's, it's um, very tough. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. And to be able to come to New York and see what our ship represents to New York City and the people of New York City is, is uh, I don't know, I can't even describe it. And then to do the parade today and be able to see the parade from like the big guy's spot, it was, it was a great time. And How you doing? Ben Simon, Senior Chief Simons, also on uh, USS New York. Um, I work for Jesse down in the engineering department. I'm in charge of the uh, division that makes the ship go through the water, uh, provide electricity for the ship. Um, I was initially supposed to pre-com the ship, so for me it's kind of a bigger thing to be able to come back as it's been actually built and tested and now actually fully functionable to uh, be a part of that. Uh, today was absolutely amazing to come here to New York with the New York and, uh, and represent what you know the ship's supposed to be about with that 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 namesake and why that ship is what she is and it's it's a pretty cool honor to be able to be there and like Jesse was saying to you know march in the parade and you know walk walk down the Broadway and then to be able to go back and sit in the main stage it's young guy from Wisconsin from small town Wisconsin never in my life did I think I'd be able to do something like this so it's pretty amazing. Thank you for your service. Thank you. My name's Captain Christopher Walker. I, uh, I'm a JTAC with uh, Anglico. Uh, eight did eight years active. Just left active duty a month ago. Um, moved to the city here to start at NYU. I'm now a reservist with 4th Anglico. Um, I was asked to escort a World War II veteran, um, Petty Officer 3rd Class Robert Dott, um, who is a, uh, an honored guest today, and uh, escorted him during the parade and uh, very honored to be here and be a part of this uh, story tradition of the New York Veterans Day Parade. So thank you very much for having me. I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Veterans Day Parade in New York City and I'd like to thank everyone for their service. Thank you. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy A Yankee Doodle Do or Die A real life nephew of my uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July.